that is designing with the EKV model. That is, of course, this is just a, a, a little overview. We will do this later on in the following lectures. We will, we will apply this uh, when we are presenting the material for amplifier design. So here we are, we have again this model um, and I have ex already explained where all this thing come from and there's exactly the same, uh, this should be drain bulk instead of source bulk, the same error of course, because it's just the same picture. So, and then we were asking ourselves, how do these model parameters devise on the geometry and the operating conditions? And what we just asked in the poll is just, let's say, simple questions like say of course we cannot predict in three digits what it will do but we want to have for at an early stage of the design a rough indication of what will be happening if i do this or that and what should i do to achieve this or that so it's not about accuracy and um, and in in many digits no it's just a design direction that you want to have so we have these graphs and we know that we are going to use the MOSFETs in the forward saturation region. Forward means that the drain is positively biased with respect to the source. Reverse for an end device would mean that the drain is negative biased with, re with respect to the source. So we have the four, but for MOSFETs that are symmetrical, you would have the same characteristics, of course. But this is biasing. This picture shows you biasing in the forward uh, saturation region. Keep it simple, that's important. We want to have rough indications what we have to do during design and not three digits accurate. That is what the simulator will tell us later if it is really important. So up to critical inversion, so the inversion coefficient is really a nice thing to have, up to critical inversion, the transconductance increases with the inversion coefficient. That is what is important to know. Because if you want to have more transconductance, then you see with the same with the same geometry, you have to go to a higher inversion level. The cutoff frequency is proportional with the small signal transconductance for a given uh, uh, transistor. So it means if you want to have a high FT, a high cutoff frequency, you have to go to a high inversion coefficient but if you go higher than critical inversion it doesn't give you much more it will draw more current but it doesn't give you much more ft so it's not very efficient and maybe you have to do something else then the channel current noise spectral density is proportional with the transconductance i think you should know this and the corner frequency of the one over F noise is proportional with the cutoff frequency. So if you have a high cutoff frequency, unfortunately, you also have a high corner frequency of the one over F noise. This will be discussed later also in, I think, one or two lectures later. This is the simple rules that you uh, have to know about designing with the inversion coefficient. And if you want to know more, there's really a very nice book about it. That is from this Mr. Uh, uh, Binkley. And you see, I just copied a part of his page here. Let's say it says, I increase the length while maintaining the inversion coefficient. And here I'm increasing the inversion coefficient. Well, inversion coefficient of one, we call moderate inversion. 0.1, weak inversion, 10, strong inversion. And I think in CMOS 18, about 30, 32, then we have velocity saturation. So we have critical inversion. And here we have uh, uh, the velocity saturation and, and the short channel effects. So if you want to have a high uh, cutoff frequency in a low area, you, you, you are going to operate here, at a, almost at velocity saturation. Um, with the length as short as possible. But if you want to have a low one over F noise and you get a low cutoff frequency, I wouldn't know why you would like to have something like that, but of course <laughs> you have to accept it. One, one over F noise low can be very, uh, low corner frequency can be very uh, important. Then you have to go to a long device. You get a low 
cutoff frequency and work at weak inversion. Because if the current density increases, and then you will probably have, you mostly have more uh, one over F noise. Well, here is uh, the, this book discusses a lot more, and there's also something, of course, to come in the in the course material. But I think this, if you want to become a chip designer, a part of this book, I, I certainly would not dive into the circuit things, but more about the technology, especially about the CMOS aging relations between GM and the inversion coefficient. But all these expressions from the book are implemented in SlideCAD. That is the basis of this uh, program.